Basically, we have uh, two uh, kinds of ultrasound probes. One is a linear probe, which produces a square shaped or rectangular image, and other is a sector probe, which produces a fan shaped image. And typically, these linear probes are high frequency probes from 7 to 15 megahertz, and they are used for imaging superficial structures and deeper structures cannot be viewed. The, the advantage is that as we can use the high frequency, the resolution is very good, but deeper structures could not be evaluated as the high frequency ultrasound gets attenuated fast in the deeper tissue. Now the another thing is the this sector probe. Here we use a low frequency probe, generally uh, 3.5 to 5 megahertz. And we can use to image the deeper structures. The, the advantage is that we have a large field of view, but the, as I told you, the resolution is low and the superficial structures could not be well evaluated. So normally we need these two kinds of probe to evaluate the patient for superficial structures uh, or for, uh, for superficial things when we require high resolution, we use linear probes and for deeper structures or when we want to scan a large area, we need this sector kind of low frequency probes. Now coming to the various applications of the ultrasound, ultrasound has become a, a very a popular modality and in almost all area of the body ultrasound have been used. Just to enumerate uh, uh, the neonatal brain, as uh, the ultrasound has difficulty in penetrating bones and uh, bowel gases also cause disturbance while doing ultrasound. So these two places, one is bone and other is bowel gases or any kind of air, they are a barrier for ultrasound. Uh, where these two structures are not encountered like thick bone or air, then we can use ultrasound. So in, in pediatric age group, when the anterior frontal is open, we can use uh, uh, ultrasound to image the neonatal brain. We can also do transcranial Doppler. We can, we can use uh, ultrasound to image the orbit from, from above, uh, above the eyelids. And it gives very good resolution of the globe. And in the neck, we can, we can image the thyroid. We can do uh, neck ultrasound to evaluate the neck vessels, neck lymph nodes, for shoulder joints and we can use uh, ultrasound, we can do upper limb Doppler. In female patients, we can do breast ultrasound, it's a very good screening tool. However, it's not as good as mammography, but it has got certain advantages. And we can uh, use chest ultrasound, of course lung cannot be seen by ultrasound. But for pleural effusion or for impima, ultrasound can be used. In abdomen, uh, almost all organs can be imaged. We can do renal Doppler to see blood flow in the kidneys. In obstetric age group, for, for evaluating pregnancy, ultrasound is the, the standard thing. We can use transrectal ultrasound to see pro prostate and we can use transvaginal ultrasound to evaluate the uterus and ovaries. In pediatric age group, when the hip bones are not ossified, then uh, ultrasound can be used to diagnose uh, congenital uh, hip dysplasia. For testis, we can use a, a, a scrotal ultrasound, we can evaluate arteries and veins by doing Doppler, and any play, anywhere we can use for subcutaneous and muscle lesions, we can use ultrasound. So practically, ultrasound has got lot of uh, application in all our body. And there are a lot of advantages of ultrasound. One is that the machine is small, it's portable, it can be kept anywhere, it can be taken in the OT, it can be taken in the ICU, and the machine uh, is small, it, it does not involve radiation, there is no radiation risk. We can use ultrasound for screen, uh, screening the pregnant patient, for pediatric patients, there is no uh, need for radiation. And although uh, contrast agents are also a available uh, for ultrasound, but generally we don't require contrast and there is no risk for contrast, re, uh, contrast allergy or anaphylactic reaction. So there are a lot of, uh, and it is cheaper compared with MR and CT. 
So there are a lot of uh, advant advantages of using ultrasound. That's why it has become very popular in radiology. Now I will uh, just give you some examples of how, uh, how we use this ultrasound to image our different body areas. First of all, I have taken abdomen. So to, to, to do ultrasound, like this is, a, this is a patient and there is a person who is holding the ultrasound probe and uh, he need to know the, the, the anatomy of the body. Basically, the person who is doing ultrasound has to be well versed with, with anatomy and especially the cross-sectional anatomy of the body. Like if the person is keeping his probe in the right upper quadrant, he should know that he will, he will cross-sect the liver and the gallbladder and the image will, will produce like this. He will produce an image of the liver. These are the hepatic veins. So basically you have to be well versed with the anatomy and uh, you should know that which, which structure is, in, is situated in the abdomen where. So a 3D orientation of the anatomy is very important while doing ultrasound and you can image uh, different organs by, by knowing where you are keeping the probe, so what organs are lying underneath that and that is all. Uh, another uh, thing, the same per, uh, the same patient, here the probe is kept uh, to, to scan the gallbladder and the ultrasound beams are cross-secting the gallbladder and on ultrasound we can see this is ultrasound of the gallbladder, this is part of the liver, this is gallbladder, the lumen is, uh, is fluid filled so it is not giving rise to any signal and the wall is slightly echogenic, 